So I heard you're the new game mode of Windows 11, right? Yeah, of course, the hottest operative system in years. Hmm, <laughs> interesting. Yeah, I mean, it will cause a revolution in the gaming industry. Oh, is that so? I heard that the previous game mode didn't do much. Oh, you mean that guy? That's the past you see right there. Past. Mm -hmm. Don't take me wrong, people were saying that it was reducing input lag and actually helping the performance in low-end computers, but I, I personally, I didn't notice anything. Yeah, 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 but I am so much more different. You should leave me on. Just saying. Oh, really? Just saying. <laughs> For today's sponsor, we have GVG Mall, where you can acquire your Windows 10 Home serial key for only $16. And using my SKEG discount code will get you 20% off, making it only $11. After the payment, you'll receive the key in your account, and after getting it, you simply need to introduce it in your Windows settings, and BAM! You have an activated system. Hello guys, I'm Shinkin Plays, I'm Fabio Pisco, and welcome to my channel. So today's video is about Windows 11 game mode. If you don't know, I already tested the Windows 10 game mode in this video, like one year ago, I think, and now I'm testing Windows 10 game mode to see if there's a difference or not. So in its base, Windows, uh, Windows game mode is basically just um, a thing to not let pr some programs and notifications run while you're playing some games. There are some videos online that actually show that Windows game mode improves the input lag a bit, if it is true or not, I don't know, but those videos are there. Um, the reality is that I don't notice any input lag difference and so on. But I mostly play single player games and from time to time I go to multiplayer, so to multiplayer one, so basically that's why. But well, basically this video is for that people that really want to know if there's a difference in terms of performance or not, at least uh, in a normal computer. For now, we're not using a normal computer, we're using the Ryzen 9 5900X and the RX 6800, of course, but for example, in my other video of the Windows 10 game mode, we have uh, the Ryzen 5 3600, if, I, if I'm thinking correctly, yes, the Ryzen 5 3600 and the RX 5700 XT, if you want to see it, okay? Of course, that in really, really low-end computers, uh, for, for example, some really low-end computers with a low amount of RAM, let's say like 2 gigabytes of RAM, um, maybe no SSD, maybe a CPU with only two cores, maybe the game mode can help a bit. But if you actually need game mode to improve your performance, your PC is already really, really bad. Oh my eyes! My eyes! So let's see if in a modern computer, the game mode from Windows actually has FPS or not, or higher 1% lows, aka smoothness, higher smoothness or not. And well, with this all said, let's go to the benchmarks. It's all about humanity. The first game tested today is Far Cry New Dawn, and as can be seen, the results are basically equal, with Game Mode Off actually delivering a bit higher results, mostly in terms of averages. 
As for the allocated RAM, it was interestingly higher with game mode on, as was shown in the side-by-side -side comparison, and it should be the opposite. Still, virtually the same results. now with Rainbow Six Siege, and as shown the results are nothing more, nothing less than virtually the same. This because the results are all within the margin of error. As for the side-by-side -side comparison we saw that, this time, game mode on actually had less allocated RAM. As for temperatures it is normal that game mode has higher ones since the tests were made in this afternoon where the ambient temperatures were quite higher. Let's move on. Now with CSGO, where Russians are everywhere but Russian servers. As for the results, we see more or less the same values once again, with game mode on somehow giving higher 1% lows at 1440p. God knows why. In terms of side-by-side -side comparisons, game mode on has once again more allocated RAM and has lower FPS in some parts and higher in others, making things even in the end. Not much more to say really, so let's move on. Now with Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Hmm, this is an interesting one. As you can see at 1080p we get a bit more FPS in the 1% lows, while 1440p and 4K results are the same. As for the side-by-side -side comparison we got higher temps with game mode on, mostly on the CPU, and that happens because the ambient temperatures were also way higher, so you shouldn't care much about it. And as you can see, the performance is once again around the same. With Horizon Zero Dawn we see absolutely no difference at all in terms of actual performance, but we can see a difference of almost 1 GB less of allocated RAM when using game mode on. Apart from that, everything is virtually the same. I mean, as it should, and using game mode here will make absolutely no difference. Let's see if we have a difference in the next one. This time with Red Dead Redemption 2 using the inbuilt benchmark with Vulkan API and high settings. This time the allocated RAM is the same and the temperatures were once again higher due to the ambient temperatures being higher as well and blah blah blah, you know that. Interestingly enough, this is actually the first game where game mode does get us some extra performance. Somehow, but it does. We have higher average FPS in all resolutions, with minimums strangely being higher at 1440p. I mean, even higher than at 1080p. Once again, strange. But well, 
it is what it is and although minimums may vary quite a bit, averages tend to be more constant and it seems that this game in particular benefits from game mode on. PUBG is the next game, and once again we actually get better results with game mode on once we are CPU bound, in this case at 1080p. We get around 2 average FPS more, but what's really relevant is the difference in the 1% lows, which is 8 FPS more with game mode on. Will it change the fluidity of the overall gaming? Of course not, but well, higher is higher, that's all. This time with Fortnite, using the replay feature, the X11 and Epic settings. Once again the story repeats itself and the results are visibly the same. Nothing more, nothing less, as all of them are within the margin of error. And since I've nothing more to say, let's just agree that childhood is when Jerry is your idol and adulthood is when you understand that Tom was actually a nice cat and Jerry was an asshole. Moving on. Stay out of the open and you'll make it. Jump out of the aircraft, soldier. Today's last benchmark is once again Call of Duty Warzone using the X11 and Max settings in the Warzone practice. As I said in the previous video, this is a gameplay test with no replay feature, so the margin of error, at least in the 1% lows, is quite high. And if we look at averages, we can see that once again things are virtually the same, being the 1% lows the only difference, and like I said before, they can be easily changed by a gameplay variation. So focus more on the averages, just one more game where game mode makes no difference. Let's go to the conclusion. So guys, concluding, well, you saw the results, and in a matter of fact, in terms of performance, we have almost no difference, apart from like one, one or two games where impressively we had more FPS. I, I, I am still not believing this because it is really impressive how actually the Windows game mode can add FPS uh, to something just by disconnecting the, the background apps and so on in a computer as strong as this one. So the Ryzen 9 and the RX 50, 6800, sorry and still has FPS in some situations. Not much, not many FPS, I mean, uh, not much of a difference, but it is there. So depending on your hardware, you may actually benefit a bit from uh, Windows game mode. But like I said once again, all these parts uh, will play the games completely fine. So if you're actually waiting for Windows game mode to do something to your gaming experience to actually deliver you a better gaming experience, well, you can, you can surely wait seated because it will take a long time and it won't happen mostly. The Windows game mode will definitely help in some scenarios if people on the internet are correct. It has, um, it improves the input latency and so on. Like I said, I personally noticed no difference. But overall, I mean, just leave it on because it won't hurt you to have it on. But if you're having problems, maybe deactivating Windows game mode may serve you well. Because in some scenarios, uh, for example, in Windows 10, I had some games that were having some troubles uh, with stuttering and so on. And as soon as I deactivated the Windows game mode, the game went smoothly. I don't know why. Don't ask me why, because I don't know why I didn't, I didn't write the code for Windows game mode. But it just made the game stutter. And without it, the game was smooth. So yeah. Computers have these strange things that we can't actually explain. It just happens. It's like turn off and turn on again and everything is fine. That's how computers work. So guys, that's basically all for today's video. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe and share this video because that really helps a lot. And well, see you in the next one. Maybe an interesting video. Leave your comment in the comment section. Let me know what you think about these results. And also, give me ideas for the next videos because I really want to give you the videos you want to see. Thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next video.